Magandang araw po sa ating lahat, sa ating mga kababayan, at sa mga kasamahan sa Paris Theory Evangelical Theological Seminary, at sa ating mga estudyante, magandang araw po. We are continuing our discussions on Biblical Counseling. This is our fifth class. And we are now on the lesson four. We are now on the lesson four. We are continuing our discussion on man's way and God's way. No. <clears throat> so last time, we have discussed regarding the resources that God has given us. The resources that has given us for us to face, deal with, uh, and continue on and to face and handle every difficulties in our life. No. Ano yung tatlong bagay na ibinigay ng Diyos? First one is? Scripture. scripture, the authority of the scripture. <clears throat> the scripture is ano what? Ang sabi niya, <clears throat> ang scripture daw po ay binigay ng Diyos for uh, patabagay, no? <clears throat> for teaching, no? Ituturo niya po sa atin ang tamang daan, no? Pangalawa, for uh, refruit, sasabihin niya sa atin kung saan tayo naligaw na landas. Pangatlo, for correction, sasabihin niya ta sa atin pa paano bumalik na landas. At pang-apat is for training in righteousness. Sasabihin niya sa atin kung paano tayo mananatili o sa landas ng buhay. No. Pangalo po na ipinagkalob sa atin ng Espiritu ay ang ano? <coughs> ang ng Diyos ay ang banal na Espiritu. <coughs> no? The Spirit, <coughs> ang katibayan ng Diyos. <coughs> ang katibayan na lahat ng pangako ng Diyos ay mangyayari sa atin. Basahin niyo po ang Biblia at napakaraming pangako ang Diyos. At ang Balala Espiritu, ang katibayan. Na ano daw po, ang lahat daw po yun ay mangyayari sa banal sa pamagitan ng Balala Espiritu. <clears throat> no. So kung kailangan daw natin ang karunungan, andyan ang Balala Espiritu siyang ating per personal na gabay. No. At tutulong mo sa atin sa ating pangumuhay. Pangatlo, Bye. is yung pananalangin. No. Ibinigay ng Diyos sa atin ang pananalangin for us to to ask assistance, no? To seek for a divine intervention, no? Ibig sabihin, <clears throat> lahat po ng resources ng Diyos is available to us through prayer. Kaya nga pag nanalangin tayo, ang sabi ng Biblia, pray with thanksgiving. Because, no, yun yung problema natin, may resources na available sa Diyos. Tatlong bagay ang binigay ng Diyos, no? At pag-usapan mo natin yun is yung mga filosofiya ng tao, no? mga pilosopiya ng tao in contrary to the uh, teachings of the word of God. No. Ang ating memory verse nyo ay 2nd 2nd Corinthians 3, 5 and 6 Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves but our adequacy is from God who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant not of the letter but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. In this lesson, we will investigate some of the false philosophies that are presented in the world as quote-unquote truth and facts, as the latest or quote what we call the latest scientific research. You will see the total inadequacy of the world's wisdom as compared to the changeless, ageless, and absolute wisdom of God. Also in this and subsequent lessons, we will follow a, th a teaching technique exemplified in the scriptures and of contrasting God's way and man's way. Jesus, Jesus often said, You have heard that it was said, but I say unto you. He taught by contrast to encourage them to listen and to what he was saying and to make his point clear. To make his point clear. No. So the purpose of these lessons are to contrast man's philosophies of life with God's truth for living. I repeat, to contrast man's philosophies of life with God's truth for living. Second, to illustrate the folly and confusion of the world's wisdom in solving problems as compared to the certainty of God's plan for overcoming any difficulty of life. And third, to evaluate biblically the differences between man's way and God's way and let the day to, fall, to give you further opportunity to prepare your own testimony of God's grace and mercy and to demonstrate your own commitment to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> no, to follow the Lord 
Jesus Christ. Pakibasa po sa atin ang principle number 7. You cannot live according to God's design in your own way or by your own wisdom. Ang sabi niyan? <clears throat> Pakiulit na ulit. You cannot live according to God's design in your own way or by your own wisdom. Okay, tinan mo natin. <clears throat> Proverbs 12, 14. Proverbs 12, 14. No. Kung bakit hindi daw po tayo pwedeng mabuhay no, na nakabase, no, nakabase sa ating sariling kaparaanan at sa ating sariling karunungan. Proverbs 12, 14. Ang kakamtin ng tao ay batay sa gawa o salita. Bawat isa ay tatanggap ng karampatang gantimpala. Proverbs 12, ba? Kawitaan po. Ah, kung nga. 14, so malikot pala. 14, 12. Sorry. 14, 12. Nakaka po malita na. 14, 12. May daang matuwid sa tingin ng tao, ngunit kamatayan ang dulo nito. Ano siya sabi yan? <clears throat> Nasa tingin ng tao, ang alam niya tama. Pero kapahanmakan pala ang mapapala. No? Sabi natin, man thinks that he is in the right road, but instead it leads to destruction. Next verse natin, Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. Isaiah 55, 8 to 9. Ang sabi ni Yahweh, ang aking kaisipan hindi ninyo kaisipan. Ang inyong kaparaanan ay hindi ko kaparaanan. Kung paano ang langit ay mas mataas kaysa lupa, ang aking kaparaanan ay higit kaysa inyong kaparaanan. At ang aking kaisipan ay hindi mahaabot ng inyong kaisipan. Ano? Ang tao daw ho, ano? Limited lang ho yung ating kalman. Uh, hindi natin maunawaan yung karunungan ng Diyos. No? Kaisipin nyo nga naman. No? Uh, naunawa natin yun kung paano nangyari ito tinatawag natin yung cycle ng water no? sino gumawa niya, sino nakaisip niya no? bakit may cycle of water no? bakit ang mundo ho natin umiikot at hindi, hindi bumabagal sa pag-ikot no? sino nagawa ho niya kaisipan po lahat ng Diyos siya tignan natin siya sabi sa 1 Corinthians 2.14 1 Corinthians 2.14 Sapagkat ang taong hindi nagtataglay ng Espiritu ay hindi kayang tumanggap ng mga kaloob mula sa Espiritu ng Diyos. Para sa kanila, kahangala ng mga iyon at di nauunawaan sapagkat ang mga bagay na espiritual ay mauunawaan lamang sa paraang espiritual. Yan. No. So man in his own wisdom has developed a vast number of philosophies and theories seeking to explain one thoughts, words and action. In doing so, man has pridefully sought to deny his own sinfulness and has confused any clear definition of God's standard of right and wrong. No. Okay, basta sa atin principle number 8. Principle number 8. The natural man is rebellious. The natural man is self-centered and rebels against God's way. Furthermore, partial obedience to God is just as unacceptable to Him as even your deliberate Rebellion. Yan. No, sabi natin, the natural man is self-centered and rebellious. The natural man's problem is even worse than being inadequate. He is actually rebellious toward God. No. <coughs> Kaya nga pa sila natin, pag sinabi natin bawal, anong gusto ng tao? Yung hindi bawal. No. Pag sabi natin, ang gusto pala ng tao yung bawal na ginagawa. No. Also note that partial obedience is just unacceptable to God. No. As deliberate rebellion. Tinanong natin, Ang example ni, ni Saul, ni Harry Saul, sa 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 3 to 23. <clears throat> no? Chap, uh, chapter 15, verse 3 to 23. At pag-usapan mo natin, no? uh, ito naging dahilan kung bakit nawala sa pagiging hari sa, ng Israel o ilalay sa pagiging hari ng Israel si, ano, si Harry Saul. Pakibasa natin verse 3 lang muna. Lusuwin mo ang Amalek at lipulin silang lahat. Wasakin mo ang lahat nilang ari-arian at huwag magtitira kahit isa. Patayin mo silang lahat, babait lalaki, mula sa pinakamatanda hanggang sa sanggol. Patayin mo rin ang kanilang mga baka, tupa, kamelyo at asno. Okay. Anong utos? <clears throat> Patayin lahat. Patayin lahat, no? Pag sinabi bang lahat may titira? Wala. Wala ang titira. Diyan natin. Ano ang ginawa ni Saul? Verse 8 to 9. Nilipol niya ang mga taong bayan, ngunit binihag ng buhay si Haring Egag. Hindi rin pinatay ni Nasaul 
ang magagandang baka, tupa, at lahat ng matatabang hayop doon at pinatay lang nila, ang lahat ay hindi na magpapakinabangay. Okay. <clears throat> ano ang ginawa doon ni Azihara sa ulat ng mga tao? Binukay si Haring Adrag at okay. kinuha yung mga maral matataba na hayop. Matataba na hayop. Okay. In verse 13, no, ano ang sinabi ni Haring Saul? Tingnan natin ha. Ang liwanagin natin, ang, ang utos sa kanya, to kill all. Ang ginawa niya, he spared Agag and the best of the land. No. Ano ang ano anyang, uh, report sa verse 13? Sumunod siya roon at nang makita siya ni Saul ay binati siya. Pagpalain ka ni Yahweh, sinunod kong lahat ang utos niya. Ano sabi ni Saul? Sinunod kong lahat ang utos niya. Okay. Ha? Ano sinabi ni Samuel, verse 14? Itinanong ni Samuel, ano itong naririnig kong iyakan ng mga tupa at unga ng mga baka? So, ano inaakusan ni Samuel kay? Kay Han Saul. Ano po yung? Anong inaakusa? Ni Ayong, ah, yung mga naririnig. Ano yung naririnig niya? Iyakan ng mga tupa. Yun ay ebedensya ng ano? Na hindi niya sinunod. Nang hindi niya, na siya ayaw. Nagsisinungaling at siya hindi sumunod. ano sinabi niya sa verse 15? To justify. Sabi ni Saul, Kinuha ko iyan ang mga tauhan ko sa Amalek. Kinuha nila ang mga pinakamainan na tupa at baka upang ihandog kay Yahweh. Ang mga walang halaga ay pinatay namin. So, anong sagot ni, uh, ni Hana Saul? Ano? Blame shifting. Di ba? <clears throat> Sabi niya, kasi yung mga tao, kasi kinuha ng mga tao eh. O, di ba? No. Save the animal as an offering to the Lord. No? Eh, maganda nga namang rason. Di ba? Pero anong kumanda ng Diyos? Kill all. Interesado ba ang Diyos sa mga hayop? Hindi. Okay. Verse 22 and 23. Sinabi ni Samuel, Akala mo ba higit na magugustuhan ni Yahweh ang handog at tahain kaysa ang pagsunod sa kanya? Mas mabuti ang pagsunod kay Yahweh kaysa paghahandog at ang pakikinig ay higit pa sa hain taba ng tupa. Ang pagsaway sa kanya ay kasinsama ng pagkulang at ang katigasan ng ulo tulad ng pagsamba sa Diyos-Diyosan. Sapagkat itinakwil mo ang salita ni Yahweh, itinakwil ka rin niya bilang hari. <coughs> Bakit ako natin when Saul, no, King Saul, selectively choose which part of God's command he would follow and which part, which part he would not follow? He was disobedient even though he accomplished almost all that God has commanded. The fact that Saul was selective meant that he maintained control over his life and played God in his own life. To what did Samuel equate Saul's partial obedience? Sabi doon, to the sin of rebellion, to the sin of divination or witchcraft. To the sin of idolatry. No. Nakita niyo po, partial disobedience ay katulad daw po ng kasalanan ng rebelyon. No. Kasalanan ng witchcraft. No. Kasalanan ng arrogance. Kasalanan ng idolatry. The key issue in Saul's actions was who is in control. Parang ito, gusto niyang sundin, ang gusto lang niya, at ang ayaw niyang sundin, ayaw niya. Sino kanyang, sino ang may control? Siya o ang Diyos? Palagay mo. Siya pa rin ang may control ng kanyang buhay. So, choose to be the one in control. He decided when he would be obedient and when he would not be obedient. As a result, no, tinanggap ni Saul ang napakabigat na consequence. He lost his position as king. This is a valuable lesson for us. If we obey God in every aspect of our lives, what, but we purposely determine not to obey Him in one point, we maintain no, control like King Saul. 
we are refusing to obey the Lord as do as you as though we disobeyed in all points. Kaya nang siya sabi sa atin, Santiago Kapitulo 2 sa Latang Jis. Santiago Kapitulo 2 sa Latang Jis. If you refuse the Lord, no, in some point, ang daw pong kaso. Ang lumalabag sa isang utos kahit tumutupad sa iba pa ay lumabag sa buong pautosan. So hindi po pwede yung partial, no? Hindi po pwede yung sa isa sa sampung utos, isa lang, uh, siyam lang ang susundin natin. Piliin lang natin yung siyam, no? Ito nakakalungkot, no? Yung sampung utos, binawasan nga nila ng isa, no? Yung number 10, eh, dinibay pa nga nila, no? So, hindi po pwede yung garoon, no? Dapat complete obedience. Think about an area in your life where you have yet to yield control over to the Lord. It may be a sin that no one else knows about. It may be, it may involve a failure to forgive someone else or a fa failure to carry out your responsibility. You, you do not need to write down the specifics, no. But think about how you will demonstrate love for the Lord and others by doing what you know God wants you to do in this area. No, kung may mga, may mga areas po natin buhay na hindi po natin naayos pa, it's now time, no? Na to think, who is in control? If you're in control, no, magiging problematic ang buhay natin. Hindi tayo sumusunod sa Panginoon. If God is in control, dapat total and complete obedience ang ating ginagawa. Tingnan natin siya sabi ng Panginoon sa principle number 9. Principle number 9. Man needs to be changed. It is necessary to be born again or to be born from above to have a spiritual birth in order to recognize, admit, and solve your problems in a biblical manner. Only God's solutions, grace, empowering, and wisdom are completely adequate for abundant living. Okay. <clears throat> so tingnan mo natin, Let's review the reasons that man is in such a lost state by looking at the histories of man failure, no? By looking at the histories of man failure. God's word or the, the biblical model of man's failure. God's word is the only true source and authority for the being, no? It reveals man's failure, the subsequent consequences and the effect that man's original sin has on today's world. Okay. Ano siya sabi po yan? That's the failures of man. Mankind was created in God's image. So, ayon sa Genesis chapter 1. No? Ibig sabihin, unique, created in righteousness, recipient of blessings and responsibility. Pangalwa, mankind sin and has borne the many consequences of the sin unto the present. No? Tingnan mo natin ang sinasabi sa Genesis, no? Tingnan mo natin ang history ng atin ng pagkakasala. Genesis chapter 2, no? Hanggang Genesis chapter 3. Okay. Ano sabi natin? <clears throat> Genesis, Genesis, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. Sa Tagalog po ay basa, 2.17. Maliban sa bunga ng punong kahoy na nagbibigay ng kaalaman tungkol sa mabuti at masama, huwag na huwag mong kainin, kakainin ang bungang iyon, sapagkat sa araw na kakainin mo iyon, ay mamamatay ka. Okay, ang sabi niya? Ano yung warning? Huwag na huwag mong kakainin ang bungang iyon. Bakit? Sapagkat sa araw na kainin mo iyon, ay mamamatay ka. Yan. Okay, <clears throat> tinaw natin. Ano nangyari? Genesis chapter 3, 6 to 7. Ang punong kahoy ay napakaganda sa paningin ng babae at sa palagay niya ay masarap ang bunga nito. Naisip din niya na kahanga-hanga ang maging marunong kaya't pumitas siya ng bunga at kumain nito. Binigyan niya ang kanyang asawa at kumain, kumain din nito. Nagkaroon niya sila ng pangunawa matapos kumain. Noon nila na lamang sila lubad, kaya kumuha sila ng mga daon ng igos, pinagtahitahin nila ang mga ito at ginawang panakit sa katawan. Okay, kita natin, spiritually, no, <clears throat> ang sabi ng Panginoon, warning, in the day that you eat, you shall surely die. No, maliwanag yan, sabi ng Panginoon, you shall surely die. Physically, no, <clears throat> they give in to what? The desires of the flesh. No, the desires of the flesh. 
and the last of the size of the eyes, no? The last of the flesh, the desires of the eyes. Nakita nilang maganda, no? Masarap ang, uh, ang bunga. Maganda din naman na magkaroon ng karunungan. O, di ba? At, ano yari? No? And because of that giving in, no? To the desires of self-gratification and self-exaltation, ano yung resulta? Then, now they knew they were naked. At anong ginawa nila? They make a cover up. No? But that is a temporary. Sa araw kita na ang damit mo yung dahon. No? Eh, di pagka natuyo yun. Hiwahiwalay na rin yan. No? Tignan natin. Mentally, anong epekto sa kanila? Genesis chapter 3 verse 8 to 10. Nang dapit hapon na, narinig nilang naglalakad sa halamanan ang Panginoong Yahweh. Kahit nagtago sila sa mga puno. Ngunit tinawag niya ang lalaki at tinanong, Saan ka na roon? Natakot po ako nang marinig ko kayo'y nasa halamanan. Nagtago po ako sapagkat ako'y hubad, sagot ng lalaki. Okay. Ano po naranasan nila mentally? No? Sabi doon, they hid themselves. They were afraid. So ano naranasan nila? Fear, worry, anxiety, and deceptiveness. Ano niyo po? Uh, wala dapat tayong fear, worry, no, and anxiety. It's a result of sin. No. Okay. Socially. Chapter 2, verse 1. Kasi pinakain po ako ng babaeng ibinigay ninyo sa akin. So, go ng lalaki. So, socially, anong ginawa niya? Is, the man is blame shifting. No? Ang sabi niya? Uh, the woman that you gave me. Parang gato eh. Sinisisi pa niya ang Diyos. No? Kung hindi mo ako parang gato siya sabi, kung hindi mo ako binigyan ng babae, kung hindi mo binigyan sa akin babae, hindi ako magkakasal na ganito. No? They were blame shifting and discontent with the marriage. Anong sabi naman ng woman? Mangyari po, nilin lang ako ng ahas, kaya ako natuksong kumain. Diba? Ganun din. Blame shifting, trying to justify sin. Wala lang. Yung ahas, wala lang may tuturo. Ano? So socially, no, ayaw natin tumanggap ng responsibility. No? So kaya ano, sina naninisi tayo ng ating kapwa. Tinanong natin, ano ang resulta nito environmentally? Verses 16, ah, 17 to 19. Ito naman ang sabi ng Diyos kay Adan. Dahil nakinig ka sa iyong asawa, nang iyong kainin ang ipinagbabawal kong bunga, dahil dito'y sinusumpa ko ang lupa. Sa hirap ng magpagbubungkal, pagkain mo'y magmumula. Mga damo at tinik ang iyong aanihin, halaman sa gubat ang iyong kakainin. Sa pagod at pawis, pagkain mo'y nanggagaling, manggagaling. Maghihirap ka hanggang sa malibing, dahil sa alabok, doon ka nang galing, sa lupang alabok ay babalik ka rin. Okay, environmentally, ano nangyari oh? <clears throat> Sabi ni Panginoon, curse is the crown. No? Kaya ako magbungkal ka magbangbungkal pag misan, wala tubo-tubo. No? <clears throat> Tapos ano pa nangyari? Yung kisil and ano, yung mga tinik-tinik, dawag, no? dawag, hindi ho siya part of creation. No? Yan ho'y resulta ng kasalanan. No? Yung mga tinik at dawag na ating nakikita ko ngayon. They are not part of the original creation. They are part of the result of sin. So, it, even the environment was ano, affected. No? Uh, hindi na po lang bumunga ang puno sa gusto talaga niya. Punga. No? Yung mga halaman natin. Okay, tayo, lupa natin yun habang tumatagal. Lalo mong naging acidic. No? Even the natural realm suffers because of sin. Tignan natin, interpersonally, ano nangyari? Chapter 4, verse 4, ng Genesis. Kinuha naman ni Abel ang isa sa mga pangalay ng kanyang kawan. Pinatay niya ito at inihandog ang pinakamainam na bahagi. Si Yahweh ay nasihan kay Abel at sa kanyang handog. Verse 5. Ngunit, hindi niya kinalugdan si Cain at ang handog nito. <coughs> dahil dito, hindi mailarawan ang mukha ni Cain sa tindi ng galit. Ano daw? Interpersonally, nagkaroon ng problem. <coughs> problem, anger. O, di ba? <coughs> Kasama ba sa original plano ng Diyos? Hindi. No? That is a result of what? Sin. No? <coughs> because God rejected the, ano, the, the offering of Cain. Verse 7. Kung mabuti ang ginawa mo, Dapat kang magsaya kung masama naman ang kasalanay tulad ng mabangis na hayop na laging nag-aabang upang lapain ka. 
Nais nitong paghalian ka, kaya't kailangan mapaglabanan mo ito. Actually, the antidote ko yan, countenance, parang depression, di ba? Yung feelings mo, no? <clears throat> so, sabi niya, napapala, pwede pa palang maresolvan. Verse 8. Sa nga araw, niyaya ni Cain ang kanyang kapatid. Abel, pumunta tayo sa bukid. Sumama naman ito, ngunit pagdating nila sa bukid, ay pinatay ni Cain si Abel. Okay. Because Cain refused God's way, no? <clears throat> he murdered his brother Cain. <clears throat> so, interpersonal, and also sa interpersonal, anger and murder, no? Tingnan natin, personally, ano nangyari yun? Ano result sa isang tao? Verse 9 and 12. Tinanong ni Yahweh si Cain, Nasaan ang iyong kapatid? Ano? Nasaan ang kapatid mong si Abel? Sumagot siya, Hindi ko alam, bakit ako ba'y tagapag-alaga ng aking kapatid? Bungkalin mo man ang lupa upang tamnan, hindi ka mag-aali, wala kang matitirhan, at magiging lagalag ka sa daigig. Dahil kasi kayo na hindi repentant, ayaw, ayaw, ayaw niya magsisi, ayaw niya tanggapin yung kanyang kasalanan. No? So, <coughs> sinumpa siya at ang lupa, sinumpa dahil sa kanya. No? <coughs> at anong resulta ko sa kanya? Verse 13. Napakabigat namang parusa ito, sabi ni Cain kay Yahweh. Ano sabi niya? Mayroon siya, no? Self-pity. No? <coughs> so, sa Bible pala, sa Genesis pala, pinakita na lang yung mga <coughs> iba't ibang nararamdaman, no? Diba? O, oh. Perpetually, no, 5-3. Si Adan ay isang daan at tatumpong taon na nang maging anak niya si Seth na kanyang kalarawan. Pasino, <coughs> ginamit kanyang kalarawan. And Adam sin, no, continuous, continuous hanggang sa ating kapanahonan ngayon. Perpetually, no. <coughs> Universally, Romans chapter 5 verse 12. Universally, anong epekto ng kasalanan? <clears throat> no? Yung failure ng tao. Five one. Ang kasalanan ay pumasok sa sanlibutan sa pamamagitan ng isang tao at ang kamatayan ay pumasok sa pamamagitan ng kasalanan. Dahil dito, lumaganap ang kamatayan sa lahat ng tao sapagkat ang lahat ay nagkasala. <clears throat> so makita po natin, no? <clears throat> nakita natin yung history ng Uh, ng failure of man no? from Adam <clears throat> sa warning ng Diyos na spiritually na apektuhan siya na they, they died spiritually physically yung self-focus no? <clears throat> nakita nila yung last uh, na, nahikay sila ng last of the flesh no? last of the eyes and the pride of life no? mentally it resulted to them for fear, worry and anxiety no? <clears throat> socially no ay hayaw tumanggap ng responsibility na nunuro ng iba. No? Turo si Adan kay Eva, si Eva turo si Ahas, si Adan si Ahas, wala nang maituro. No? Then, environmentally, it affects our environment. Nagkaroon tayo ng nagtubigas ang lupa, hindi nag ito ng magandang bunga. No? Nagkaroon tayo ng mga thorns and tissues. Kaya pa nagtayo ka ng halaman, may kasamang tumutubo din ng mga damo. Interpersonally, pumasok yung anger, no? pumasok ang depression, pumasok ang ano, re uh, rebellion. And because of that, <coughs> no, <coughs> ang tao personally, they become, become fugitive. No? <coughs> Pag may kasalan tao, ano nangyayari sa tao? Tumatago, tago, tumatakas. No? At ano pa, nagkaroon din ng self-pity. No? At uh, perpetually habang buhay, ito ay napapasa simula noon hanggang sa atin at universally, no? Universally, man is born in sin, no? So, the man's primary need is to be justified, declared by God, and reconciled through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, no? Ulitin po natin. Man's primary need is to be justified, declared righteous by God, and reconciled by Christ, no? You're reconciled by Christ. <clears throat> okay. Tinamahon natin ang tawag nating biblical view of self. The biblical view of self. No. <clears throat> the wisdom of this world deceptively teaches that believing in the inherent goodness of oneself 
is foundational to a fulfilled life. No? Meron daw po tayong ano, inherent goodness. No? However, this erroneous viewpoint overlooks the devastating result of Adam's and Eve's failure to obey God. The scripture teaches that a fulfilled life is not dependent on having a good self-image or higher self-esteem. Instead, ful is the fulfillment, fulfillment and living depends on your relationship to God and a biblical responses to the problem of self. No? And biblical responses to the problem of self. May basa atin ang sinless self to the sinful self. <clears throat> sinless self. Dati kasi si Adam and ano, and if I sinless self, ano nasulta? Because of their disobedience, they become sinful self. Is the fall of mankind. Adam and Eve were created in the image of God. In a sinless world, blessed by God, together as one flesh, to rule over the earth. In, in, in personal communication with their Creator God. B. God placed only one restraint on Adam and Eve, which required simple obedience to His command regardless of their desires or feelings. Adam and Eve lost their privileged status with God when they fell to temptation by focusing on self, coveting uh, prideful wisdom, and gratifying their fleshly desires which is all that the world offers. They then disobeyed God's clear command by choosing to eat the forbidden fruit. When they chose to focus on self, Adam and Eve sinned, bringing the consequences of sin upon themselves and upon every generation that has followed them. <coughs> Kita natin, hindi lamang sila ang naapektuhan. Maging tayo po ay naapektuhan sa ating kapanahunan. No. So, <coughs> Number two. Scripture speaks of the natural man's importance. Okay. Since nothing and no one in the world can compare with God, He only is to be exalted. You are not in any manner to exalt yourself. In comparison to the Creator God, the natural man is like a dust, like a mere breath and a passing shadow. With a lifetime that is nothing in the Lord's sight, like a grass, like a flower of the field that flourishes and then is no more, like a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away, is stupid and devoid of knowledge, accounted as nothing and meaningless, and like a worm and not a man. Let it be. If you refuse to respond biblically to God's plan of salvation revealed only through the Lord Jesus Christ, in God's sight you are first worthless, depraved, and approved, detestable, rejected in regards to faith, and worthy of death, to corrupt unrighteousness and useless, and dead in your sins. Better see. Trusting in yourself is futile since nothing inherently good dwells within your heart or flesh. You can do nothing fruitful <coughs> apart from Jesus. Apart from Jesus Christ, you are a slave to sin and your natural wisdom is inadequate to direct your steps. Number three, the image of God in each person has been mirrored by sin, effects of the fall of mankind. That is, hey, every person natural, every person's natural bent is to sin. Even through mankind is, everyone is able to know the difference between good and evil, divinely enabled to have dominion on the earth, made a little lower than heavenly beings, and fashion in the likeness of God. Rather be, God's image, if in you, cannot be seen in its sinless perfection as it was seen in Adam, since you also bear Adam's image after the sin. Rather see, you were fearfully and wonderfully fashioned by the Lord in your mother's womb. Prior to your birth, God ordained the number of days 
for your life and with a view to your responding to the truth as revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Number four, only God can thus enable a person to acquire the perfect image of God or restoration after the fall of mankind. Letter A, the Lord Jesus Christ is fully divine and came to earth in the image of the invisible God, crowned with God's glory and honor because of His death and resurrection. He is the radiance of God's glory and exact representation of God's nature. Letter B, through your spiritual new birth, you partake of God's divine nature and are a new creation in Christ. Your body becomes a temple of the Holy Spirit who dwells within you. Number one, as a new creation in Christ, the corrupt old self has been crucified with Christ, and the old self has been put off. The new self which has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth has been put on. You now are able to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Number two, as a new creation in Christ, you are to put off the sinful practices of your old self and put on the Christ-like characteristics of the, the new self as you are being renewed in the spirit of, of your mind. And number three, to follow Jesus, you must deny yourself. You are to become a servant like the Lord Jesus Christ. Please God in all things by walking in a manner worthy of Him and give God glory in everything you do, as Jesus did. Number five, you can be more than a conqueror in Christ by dying to self or living victoriously after the fall of mankind. The A, God has graciously provided for you so that you may give glory and exaltation to Him and not to yourself. Your example in giving glory to God and disregarding yourself is Jesus, who did not seek His own glory. Instead, Jesus lived to do the will of the Father, as a servant who learned obedience from the things which He suffered and remained obedient even to death. 1. The error of man's way concerning self-worth. While you are more valuable than the lower forms of God's creation and are intimately known by God, you still deserve death because of your inherent sinful sinfulness. Being adopted into God's family should be cause you to praise and thank Him for the glory of His grace. It is wrong for you to think that you are worthy in any way to receive His unmerited favor. Okay, no. <clears throat> the first error is, oh, sabi natin kanina, sino daw po ang nagbigay ng greatest example for dying to self? <clears throat> Jesus. Jesus Christ. Si ang ating po Paiso Cristo ang the best example with regards to dying to self. <clears throat> ano naman daw po yung mga error, no? Na ginagawa po ng tao. The first one is, what we call concerning self-worth, no? Self-worth. Yeah. Siguro, pabigyan mo po yung salitang self-worth, no? Tinanong natin ang sinasabi po sa atin, no? With regards to the self-worth in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 26 to 31. <clears throat> Maging sa mga Kristiyano, may problema dito. <clears throat> na iniisip nila, na sa karapat dapat sila na iligtas ng Diyos, no? <clears throat> Tinanong natin. 1 Corinthians 1, 26 to 31. Mga kapatid, alalahanin ninyo ang inyong patayuan noong kayo tawagin ng Diyos. ay sa pamantayan ng tao, ay ilan lamang sa inyo ang matatawag na marunong, makapangyarihan at maharlika. Subalit pinili ng Diyos ang mga naturingang hangal sa sanlibutan upang hiyain ang marunong at pinili niya ang mga naturingang mahihina upang hiyain ang malalakas. Sino daw pinili ng Diyos? <coughs> Mga no. <coughs> ang pinili ng Diyos ay ano? <coughs> ang kinoconsider ng mundong ito na walang <coughs> kabuluhan. No? Yun ang pinili ng Diyos. The consider as nonsense, weak, and nothing. Tignan natin. Pangalawang error is what they talk about self-assurance. No? The error of man's way regarding self-assurance. Sabi natin dito, 
Even God's people can mistakenly think that they are the source of material blessings which are in reality provided solely by God. <clears throat> ano? Di ba pagkamis yan, nakapagano tayo? Ah, magaling kasi ako ito. Magaling kasi ako kaya pinagpapahala ako ng Diyos. No. Pride, no. Or dependence on yourself, no. Will lead you to a fall. Since you do, you can do nothing fruitful apart from Jesus. You are to live in total dependence upon Him who is the power and wisdom of God. Number three is the error of man's way and self-love. No? Self-love. Tinan natin siya sabi sa 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. 1, 1 to 2. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. No? Dapat mong malaman na sa mga huling araw ay darating ang mga panahon ng kaguluhan sapagkat ang mga tao ay magiging maibigin sa sarili, maibigin sa salapi, palalo, mapagmataas, mapagsamantala, suwain sa magulang, walang utang na loob at lapastangan sa Diyos. Ano daw ang katangian <clears throat> ng mga tao na nabubuhay ngayong last days? No. Tayo ay nasa huling araw na dahil itong description na to is the description of people living in the last days. Ano ang mga katangian nila? Sila ay ano muna? Mag, maibigin sa sarili. No, maibigin sa sarili. Selfish, no. Hindi selfless, no. Selfish, di ba? Ah, uh, bang Ano pa? Maibigin sa salapi. Maibigin sa salapi, no pa? Palalo. Palalo. Mapag mataas. Mapag mataas. Mapagsamantala. Mapagsamantala. Suwail sa magulang. Suwail sa magulang. Kita niyo? No. Ah, uh, di ba napakahirap anong sawain niyo mga kabataan niyo, no? Sa sa kapanahunan ho namin noon, no. Tingin pa lang katalo na. Ngayon, duling na yung nanay, duling na yung tatay, no. <laughs> duling na. So, tatay ko pa. Bakit mo po ako tinitigan, oh, di ba? <laughs> sa Matthew chapter 2, 22, no. Sinabi ng ating Panginoong Hesus Kristo ang dalawang batas na sinasabi niya na dapat ho natin sundin, that is to love God and to love others. No, wala hong pangat ng utos ho yan. Wala yung uh, love ourself. No, wala ho yung love ourself. Okay, that is the error, sabi nga ng Panginoon, if you love the world more than me, you are not worthy of me. No, that is the error of self-love. Then, let's continue with the error of man's way related to self-assertiveness. Through Jesus Christ, you are more than a conqueror in any situation of life. And the Lord has not given you a spirit of timidity or fear, but of power and love and discipline. However, the scripture never tells you to assert yourself. You are commanded instead to trust fully in God's plan for your life. While you, while you minister to others as a servant, esteeming them as more important than yourself. The error of man's way pertaining to self-confidence. You are not to trust in yourself, but instead are to trust only in the Lord. The Lord is your confidence, and you are to place no confidence, confidence in your flesh. You are not adequate in yourself to consider anything as from yourself, but your adequacy is from God. As a servant of the new covenant, you can be an overcomer only through your faith in Christ Jesus, and not because of your own strength. Number six, the error of man's way regarding self-esteem. No, apart from Jesus Christ, you have no inherent value in yourself. No, after receiving Jesus Christ into your life, your value is found in being in Him. Tina mo natin ang sinasabi sa Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 11. Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 to 11. Ngunit dahil kay Kristo, ang mga bagay na pinapahalagahan ko noon ay itinurin kong walang kabuluhan ngayon. Oh, Verse 9. O, oh, o, oh, o, oh, number 9. At kung gusto makipag-isa sa Kanya, ang aking pagiging matuwid ay hindi sa pamamagitan ng pagsunod sa kautosan, kundi sa pananani kay Kristo, ang pagiging matiwid ko ngayon buhat siya Diyos sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. Saan daw nanggagaling ang pagiging matuwid ni Apostol Pablo? Galing ba sa kanyang sarili o saan? Sa pananalik kay Kristo. Galing sa pananalik kay 
Kristo. No, galing sa pananalig kay Kristo. Both that the scripture tell us to esteem God, no, and others, but nowhere, no, nowhere in the scripture, wala ho sa buong Biblia, that you are told to, ano, to esteem yourself. The word esteem means to, be, to view highly, to put in a high place or on a pedestal. No. The error of man's way regarding self-righteousness. You are not righteous in yourself and it is impossible for you to earn a righteous standing before God. The best you could do in your own strength or merit is considered as a filthy garment in God's sight and is worthless when compared to the value of faith in Christ Jesus. Your true righteousness is based solely on the Lord Jesus Christ and is a pretty of God's grace. The error of man's way concerning self-exaltation. Commending yourself has no value and shows your lack of biblical understanding. Exalting oneself is characteristic of a person who is rebellious or of one who doesn't truly know the Lord. Those who exalt themselves will be humble. Self-exaltation is descriptive of a self-centered person who is rejected in regard to faith in difficult times of these last days. Exalting self in any dimension is to forget, forget, to forget or deny that your praise should be to the glory of God's grace. The Lord alone is to be exalted. You are bo you are to boast a in the Lord, b in the cross of Jesus Christ, and c in your weaknesses. If you exalt yourself, you will be humble. Yet, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, He will exalt you at the proper time. From Adam and Eve to the present, mankind has sinfully exalted self. Death to self can only occur through the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Death to self can only occur through the Lord Jesus Christ. Man philosophies having rejected God's redemptive solution, Place man on the throne and substitute a self-oriented focus as the substance and solution to life's failure and success. Now, God's solution to the problem of self is transformation. Now, even the so-called difficult problems of life are only solved effectively from the biblical perspective of pleasing God and relying on God's word instead of pleasing self and relying on human wisdom. We are going to continue with regards to what we call the basic approaches to solving problems, personal problems. No? The basic approaches in <clears throat> approaching the what we call solving personal problems. If you have your manuals with you, please turn over it in page 74 and you will see man's way and God's way. Under man's way, we have four kind of philosophies or uh, ideas which is instinctual, behavioral, positive potential, and the spiritist. The four columns under man's way depict some of the most common humanistic philosophies of the world when it comes to dealing with the difficulties of life. The aim of this chart is to teach you to recognize the difference between truth or God's way and the error which is man's way. The methodologies shown in this chart are four categories that describe hundreds of separate and distinct philosophies being advocated and practiced now in the United States and other parts of the world, particularly also in the Philippines, all dealing with personal problems. The fact that there are so many different views with the knowledge of truth, no, with the number increasing every year, indicates that these methodologies are not leading to the knowledge of truth about man, nor are they specific as many claim. The scientific methods involve five steps, observation, hypothesis, experimentation, theory, and finally is the law. For example, is the law of gravity. A scientific search for truth would result in a gradual convergence or coming together toward the central truth 
that stand as various theories were tested over many years of experiment. In contrast, man's ideas about how the mind works continue to diverge, go farther apart, year after year, and suppose solutions keep changing. Alam niyo mo na, na nagulat ako, I think that was uh, five years ago, no? or seven years ago, may isang news, uh, newspaper na nagsabi sa US that psychiatry is not science. No, psychiatry is not, sci is not a science. Even sabi nila, the Psychological Society of the America, American Sociological Society, uh, American Psychological Society, ang nagsabi ho, that psychology is not a science. No, nakakano po ito eh. Ibig sabihin, hindi science, Hindi siya katulad ng mathematics, which is a science. Hindi siya katulad ng ibang sciences natin. That, ano, uh, that continues, so the principle continues with uh, as we continue on times. No? Pero sabi, nagba, pag nagbabago-bago yung mga principle, kaya sinabi nila, they are not a science. The as important reason for pointing out these methodologies, methodologies is to look at what underlies the various processes. You must ask yourself, where do these ideas come from and what are the presuppositions on which these ideas are built? At the top of the leftmost column in the chart, notice the phrase basic view of man. Each approach is built on different theories about what man is like mentally and spiritually. In order to understand any approach, it is important to understand the basic propositions, presuppositions upon which the theory is built. No. Patinong natin. Makikita rin natin pagkatiho yung mga counseling focus nila ay mapapansin mo natin. Subukan mo natin, subukan, open your manual in page 74. The basic approaches to solving personal problems. No? Halimbawa po, sabi natin, man's way, there are four uh, ideas, no? Four ideas came from instinctual behavioral, positive potential, and spiritist. So, what is the basic view of man? What is the basic view of man? Based on the instinctual. Sabi ho ng instinctual, man is driven by instinct. No? Man is driven by instinct. Example, instinctively does things fight, flight, seek food, and gratification. According to the behavioral, the basic view of man is behavior is condition or program. According to positive potential, mayroon daw po intrinsically good. He has everything necessary within himself to solve all problems. According to a spiritist, we are helpless before all the spirit. Tinan mo natin ang sinasabi ng God's way. Sinasabi ng God's way, no, there are two kinds of man. It's either you are a sinner or you are a saint. Nakita ho natin, with regard to the basic view of man, ang laki mo ng diferensya ng man's view with regards to the, no, God's view. With regards to the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem. According to the instinctual, the cause of the problems are that our instincts are thwarted by society, family, and upbringing. According to the behavioral, wrongly influenced, no, the cause of the problems because we are wrongly influenced by environment and circumstances. Sino sinisili? Sinisisi natin? No. I is a positive potential, potential, mind blocked by negative thinking or influences. According to spiritists, committed to or under control of spirits, demons, and ancestors. According to the Bible, according to God's way, the cause of the problem is... Rebellion. Unbelief, disobedience, and denial of God's power. Kino siya sabi ng Bible? Ang sa sinasabi ko ng man's way. Another, sabi ko ng, ng man's way, the cure no, to man's problem is follow instinct. Ayon sa instinctual. Sabi naman sa behavioral, recondition or reprogram. No? Sabi ng pot positive potential, release potential with itself. Ang sabi naman ng spirit is, a peace ancestor, a peace or cast out demon spirit, discover your spirit guide. Ang sabi po ng Bible, Peacing by grace through faith and in loving obedience to be matured in Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hindi ho ba? Napakalaki ho ng pinagkaiba? Nang tiyatawag ko natin man's way and God's way. Another example, with regards to counseling technique, no? Ang sabi ng instinctual, the counseling technique should be psychoanalysis. 
interpretation of irrational thought, analysis of dreams, hypnosis therapy, psychodrama, resocialization, personality testing and analysis. No, pian ko drawing kanya ng man, ano, man, a house and a tree. No. Behave, I said, behavioral, manipulation of behavior by use of positive and negative stimuli. No, trained to respond to reward and punishment. According to positive potential, reflection of thought and feelings, no presentation of answer, draw answer out of the counselor's own inner resources, positive thinking. According to spiritists, potions, charms, amulets, fetishes, curses on enemy, curse nullification, ritual offerings, communion with spirit, mantras, chants, horoscope, and visualization. According to God's way. Listen, reprove, rebuke, rebuke, exhort. Encourage, admonish, stimulate, strengthen, restore, teach, and train. Meron ho ba dyan <coughs> na sinasabi sa Bible na nasa sarili mo yung katago, kas, kat, ano? ang, uh, ang counseling technique ay sa pamagitan sa sarili mong karunungan? Wala po. <coughs> Ginagamit po natin ang salita ng Diyos. Counselor's terminology. <coughs> no? <coughs> sa instinct 1, sabi nila, ego ay... Uh, drives, libido, conscious and subconscious, neurosis, psychosis, phobia, mania, catharsis, self-actualization, <coughs> free association. According to the behavioral, stimulus, conditioning, automatic response, positive, negative, reinforcement, self-fulfillment, and self-improvement. According to positive potential, inner potential, inherent goodness, self-assertion, self-strength, and self-worth. According to spiritists, curses, God within, higher power, official of spirits, binding of demons, generational sins, demons of spirit, of anger, lust, fear, and lust. No? According to Bible. Sin, put off practices the old self and put on practices of the new self. Self-denial, judge self, godliness, and do the world. The world. With, with regards to the counseling focus, ang sabi na instinctual, liberate self, no? It's contrary to what the Bible is saying sa Ezekiel chapter 18. Sabi naman ng behavioral, impure, improve self. Contrary to John chapter 15 and Romans chapter 1 and James chapter 4. Elevate self. Sabi ng mga parasitic potential. It is contrary to Psalm 62, Romans chapter 3 and Romans chapter 7. And sabi ng mga spirits, release self from bondage. Contrary to John chapter 15 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Ano po siya sabi sa God's way? Deny self according to Luke 9. Please God according to 2 Corinthians 5. And bless others according to 1 Peter through ministry, 1 Peter and service in Matthew 20. On the survey, some of the methods may seem to have point in line with scriptures. Sometimes without knowing it, man discovers portion of God's truth in... What they are saying, however, they are based on an incorrect understanding of the very core of how people behave and they are practiced with a totally unbiblical focus and even if worldly counselor discovers a truth, they either do not recognize nor or they deny the source of the truth which is God himself. In doing so, they try to discredit the sufficiency of God's resources to overcome problems. We must not be misled by the wisdom of man, even when it seems to offer portions of God's truth. It becomes very difficult in many cases to distinguish truth from falsehood. Many quotes contain mostly truth, and the errors are concealed very carefully. Otherwise, there would be few followers. That is why it is so important to make a thorough evaluation. Suppose that you gave someone instruction on how to get to your home. And this instruction included 10 changes in direction. Now suppose that you describe all one but of the 10 turns correctly. The result would be that following your direction, he would never get your home. He could easily end up going on the opposite direction even though your directions were 90% accurate. In the same way, something that has a lot of truth in it but also contains error though seemingly small, may result in the large deviation from what the scripture actually teaches. Furthermore, it is important to recognize that many of, many of these worldly theories or beliefs directly contradict the Bible, and as a result, stand in direct competition with God's revelation. Some of the world philosophies may take someone feel better. No, yung pakaramdam. No, dun kasi sila nakafocus sa pakaramdam. At least for a time, but they don't address the real problem. No, 
that only deal with sim they only deal with the symptoms of the problem para ho yung puno na tinatamas natin pinuputol natin yung mga sanga pinuputol natin yun hindi no? not addressing the real source ang ugat ang uh, the real source of the problem consequently it is vital that you heed God's warning not to integrate the world philosophies with the scripture as you review of these columns you should be reminded about the error of man's way However, the columns do not address individuals by name. Most counselors have a genuine concern for helping people. So intentions should not be questioned. The purpose is to distinguish between truth and error, not to question a person's motive or standing before the Lord. The encouragement to you is to be like the variants whom God commended. What does Acts 17.11 say the variants did? When they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. <clears throat> they received the message with great eagerness and they examined the scripture. Kung may natutunan ho tayo, tanggapin natin kung ito ay katotohanan. Pero para natin masabing katotohanan, suriin ho natin ang, nat ang natutunan natin ayon sa Biblia. Does this principle follow the principle of the scripture? Or it does it teaches ito ho ba'y tinuturo sa Biblia? Or it is it is a great contradiction of what the Bible is saying. No. Each of the four columns na pinag-usapan mo natin kanina, Under Man's Way shows an unbiblical theory of philosophy. When reviewing the columns, nakikita ho natin with regards to the basic view uh, and progression until the counseling focus. No. Until the, what we call the cause of the problem, the cure and the counseling technique and the counselor's terminology must fit the basic view of man and even though it is an unbiblical theory or philosophy. No. Nakita ko natin that, sa baba, sa sinabi ko natin kanina, that lahat to ng bagay na ito is, no, focus is on self, not on God. Lahat po ng mga teorya na yan, na atin po pinag-aaralan sa psychology and psychiatry, focus is on self, not on God. Alam niyo po, nung pinag-aralan ko po ito, eh, sabi ko parang kinakailangan iwas out mo lahat ng pinag-aralan mo sa psychology. No. This is true of all man's approaches for life. As we study the columns, makikita ko natin that they are in a great contradiction. They are in great contradiction to what? To what the Bible is talking about. No. It's the what the Bible is talking about. <clears throat> so nakita natin kaniya there are four no approaches <clears throat> sapulan mo natin no sa instinctual approach notice note that the basic view of man for the instinctual approach under this view you are assumed to be only another animal having the same instinct and drives as animal this assumption implies that like animals people do not have souls According to this instinctual approach, the cause of the problem is that your natural instinct that drives <clears throat> and drives have been repressed or thwarted by society, family, or upbringing. The four drives identify as said to be to seek food, to fight, and to flee from danger, and to seek sexual gratification. And since the supporters of this theory claim that you are born with these drives, it is not your fault that you have problems when these drives are frustrated. This idea was not introduced 100 years ago. It was a common belief even back in the Ezekiel's day. The Israelites had a proverb that said, The fathers eat the sour grapes, but the children's teeth are set on edge. In other words, they said that the reason the grandchildren turned out or acted in certain ways was because of what their parents did. God told them to get rid of that proverb. Because each person is responsible for his action. You can read that in Ezekiel chapter 18. According to those who believe in the instinctual approach, the so-called cure must be to go to get back to the place where you can once again follow your instinct. Proponents of this view say that you must be released from all the constraints that prevent you from fulfilling your drives. When considering the counseling technique, the belief is that only a highly trained human being can interpret what are called your subconscious irrational thought and dreams. The technique focuses on delivering, on delving instantly on the past of the counselee and open or even requires to give him 
over the control of the mind to the counselor through hypnosis. Note that even the term describing the method used are difficult to understand, thus necessitating a highly trained person to analyze you. Because of the counseling method is so difficult, the counselor's terminology is also difficult to understand. However, notice how many of these terms have become part of your daily language without our even questioning the philosophy behind it. For example, the term subconscious has been used so often, many just assume that there is such a thing even though it denies the Bible claim that everyone is responsible for his deed, thoughts, speech, and action. We cannot justify ourselves by saying, I just did it subconsciously. Diba? Madalas po natin sinasabi yan. The scripture describe, describe conscious and un alert and unconscious as sleep, but never subconscious. Finally, note the counseling focus of this approach has the goal of liberating some. No, according to Philippians chapter 2 verse 3 to 4, that we should do instead. We have to be humble, consider others better than ourselves. With regards to the behavioral approach, under the column, the basic view of man, tinanong natin, the approach of, uh, this approach says that the cause of the problem is that you have been wrongly influenced by others. No. <clears throat> Uh, natin, the basic view of man assume that you are a higher form of animal. No, having condition, reflexes, and responses just like an animal's. Once again, the assumption is that you do not have souls. You are just a higher form of animal, which is the very contradiction of the very teaching of the Bible. The approach, the cause of the problem is that you have been wrongly influenced by others and the environment around you, and therefore you have been wrongly conditioned. Once again, your problems are caused from outside you. Not what like the Bible is saying that the root of the problem is our sin. This is not a new view. The Pharisees, even in Jesus' day, manipulated the people by focusing only on the right behavior to consider a man's righteous. There was not an appeal for the heart transformation. Similarly, the behaviorists say that the cure is to reprogram or to recondition you to respond the right way. Regrettably, the counselor trained in this approach determines how you should be reconditioned according to his beliefs, preferences, and trainings. Suppose his trainings are views or views are wrong. Then according to this view, you must be reprogrammed once more, para ang computer. No, this particular counseling technique can lead many believers astray since it can seem on the surface that rewards and punishments are the same practice used by God. This is an example of how many sometimes discovers a portion of God's truth. However, even here, the world's approach in dealing with reward and punishment is very different from God's way. The behavior approach teaches individuals to expect rewards for every correct action and to avoid punishment for every incorrect action. And to avoid punishment for every incorrect action. The Lord, on the other hand, blesses or rewards us according to His sovereignty and timing for patterns of obedience. It is for the purpose of teaching us to live by the Lord's guidance to produce Chrysler character, not for what do I get out of this. No. Because this counseling method is focused on eliciting the right response, the counselor terminology is focused on changing only on the behavior, not on dealing with the heart. Finally, the counseling focus of this approach is once again on self. Looking up in John chapter 15 and state to a Sabinan verse, that we need to have a total dependence of God, a continuous abiding on Him. And lastly, no, hindi na natin titinayin yung spiritist approach. We have got the positive potential, no? Naalala ko minsan, umatay na ko na isang uh, leadership summit, no? Leadership summit. Pinag-usapan mo yung positive potential, no? Leadership summit, ano? Ng mga church, ng mga leaders ng church, ang pinag-usapan is positive potential. Ano ang basic view of man of positive potential? The positive potential approach states that everyone is basically good and that within you is the capacity and potential to solve all your problems. It denies the biblical view that the heart of man is deceitful. This view happens to be one of the most ancient untruths as seen by the statement Satan made, Satan made to Eve to tempt her. Anong sabi ni Satan? You will be like God. The basic potential is... Uh, view of man is like that the statement of Satan to, to Eve when he tempted Eve on that occasion. This approach to life is b still very popular just like it must have been during the time of the book of Judges when everyone did what was right in his own eyes. 
according to this approach, the cause of the problem is that you have had your inner potential and goodness blocked by negative thinking and all the negative influences around you. According to those who believe in the positive potential of man, you must cure the problem by releasing the positive potential within you. This is accomplished only by within yourself by solving the, solving, uh, solving the problem yourself. The counseling technique <clears throat> therefore requires a passive counselor who does not give you answer. Instead, his focus is to release the so-called goodness inherent in you by reflecting on your own statement back to you until you come up with your own answer based on the resources within you. The, this counseling method is focused on drawing out the counselor's own goodness and positive thinking. The counselor's terminology includes a statement reminding the counselor of the potential and goodness <clears throat> within him, such as the God within or the inner power within because of this belief in the goodness of man, the counseling focus of this approach is on self as having utmost importance. Makita natin sa John chapter 3, verse 10 to 18 and 23. No one is righteous and no one can understand. No one seeks God. All have turned away. Worthless. No one who does good, they possibly, no, they practice deceit, mouthful of cursing and bitterness. <clears throat> Mayroon ho bang inherent good? No, basahin mo sa Tagalog bago tayo magtapos. Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 18. Anong sinasabi ng Biblia? <clears throat> Ayon sa nasusulat, walang matuwid, wala kahit isa. Walang nakakaunawa, walang naghahanap sa Diyos. Walang, ang lahat ay lumilihis, lumilihis ng landas at nagpakasama. Walang gumagawa ng mabuti, wala kahit isa. Parang bukas na libingan ang kanilang lalamunan, para nalita nila ay pawang pandinlin lang. Ang labi nila ay may kumandag ng ahas, puno ng pagmamura at masasakit na salita ang kanilang bibig. Wala silang atubili sa pagpatay ng kapwa. Parang dinadaaran ng salat ang kanilang madaanan. Hindi nila alam ang daan ng kapayapaan. <coughs> Hindi sila marunong matakot sa Diyos. Oh, mayroon bang kabutihan sa loob dyan? Mayroon ba siya sabi kabutihan? Wala! No. O tinan mo natin siya sabi naman din, Spirit is approach. No. The basic view of man, the spiritist approach, assumes that everyone is subject to the control of the spirit without any hindrance, denying 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. This ancient truth says that the cause of the problem is that everyone is under the control of or committed to spirit, demons, or ancestors. Once again, the problems within you are said to be caused by forces outside of you. Therefore, this approach says you must cure the problem of being controlled by the spirit and ancestors by appeasing your ancestor spirit or by casting out the demons or the spirit. The counseling technique involves mantras, chants, curses on the enemies, nullifying curses on self, contacting spirits and the like. No, violating the commandment of God. Because the counseling method, method here is focused on dealing the spirit, demons and ancestors, the emphasis is on gaining power over or being delivered from his evil spirit. Therefore, the counseling terminology includes like curses and binding spirit. Once again, the counseling focus of this approach is on self and needing deliverance or protection. In our Latin, it says, First John five chapter four, First uh, John chapter five verses four to five, and state First John five four to five. Sapagkat napagtagumpay na ng anak ng Diyos ang sandibutan at nagtatagumpay tayo sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. Sino ang nagtatagumpay laban sa sandibutan? Ang sumpampalataya ng si Jesus, ang anak ng Diyos. Sino daw po ang nagtatagumpay sa sandibutan? Yung mga sumasampalataya ang nagtatagumpay sa sandibutan. This false philosophy is of certain things in common. God is not considered when individual with problems are perceived to be victims. The blame is placed on society, family, heritage, the environment, or what so-called chemical imbalance for a person failure to overcome the problems of life. Regarding chemical imbalance, it is true that certain chemical or hormonal changes in the body can make it more difficult for someone to, to behave righteously. However, chemical changes in the body cannot cause someone to sin. I repeat, chemical changes in the body cannot cause someone to sin. God tells us in His Word that He will hold everyone responsible for His deeds, thought, speech, and actions. This does not, however, mean that anyone other than a medical doctor should suggest that a person stop taking prescribed drugs. Many of the psychotherapy, 
psychotropic drugs can endanger life if taken in the wrong doses or if the intake is ceased abruptly. <clears throat> Tinan naman ho natin ang God's way. This column shows the stark contrast between God's word and man's way <clears throat> and man's ideas about man. From the basic view of man to the counseling focus, God's way is much higher than anything man can devise. God gives us tremendous hope in facing, dealing with, and enduring problems. His way remains a consistent standard and is not dependent on circumstances, other or things around us. The foundational truth about man is that he was made in the image of God, has fallen into the depraved state, and is hopeless without Christ. Man looks on the outside, feelings and circumstances, but God looks at the heart. Man says, I am not responsible. God says, you are responsible. God tells us the cause of the problem is that man is rebellious, unbelieving, and disobedient, and denies the power of God. Therefore, God's cure to man's problem is first salvation, then walking in his ways through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. Thus, the counseling te technique includes that all of the Lord says believers are to do to help others live victoriously. A biblical disciple counselor is to employ all the ways listed in this section in order to disciple the counsel effectively. Obviously, all of the biblical discipleship counseling are also included lot but a lot, comfort and prayer and everything because God has given His perfect word to show us how we are to face and deal with problems. The counselor terminology must consist of words cons consistent with the scripture such as sin, salvation, putting off the practices of self and putting on the practices of the new self. The counseling focus is in the stark contrast to all of man's way and involves denying self but ple and pleasing God and blessing others. And blessing others. <clears throat> it is important to realize that the way to distinguish truth from error is to primarily, no, is not primarily to study man's way. The key is to become intimately familiar with the truth. It is similar to how the bank personnel are taught to recognize counterfeit money by studying and handling the genuine money so much that they will easily recognize the counterfeit. So stand, spend more time in the world, not in reading books that profess to expose error. No. Ano daw po? In our application, spend more time in the world, not in reading books that profess to expose error. The solution is in God. Believing in God. No. Sa next lesson, no, uh, makikita ko natin, uh, lesson 5 will deal with the life history of problems. No. Uh, at pag-usapan nun natin ang binigay mo ng Diyos na victory over failures. Nagawa ko tayo tayo natin plano on how to become victorious in our Christian living. Once again po, in behalf of Forest and Evangelical Theological Seminary, nawa po, napagpala po tayo sa ating pag-aral ng salita ng Panginoon.